Okay, welcome to the Broadview Public Library's book banter for December 2020. This month's book, what we are going to be bantering about is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. Hello, Miss Yvonne, how are you? I'm fine, Tisha, how are you? I am doing well. I'm Tisha, and this is Miss Yvonne. We are both librarians here at the Broadview Public Library District in Broadview, Illinois. And let's get into this book, Such a Fun Age by Miss Kylie Reed. Um, so do you want me to do a synopsis? I'll do a synopsis of the book. You want me to do that? That'd be great. All right. So the book, the story starts off with Emira. Is that how you say her name? I believe so. Emira is accused of kidnapping a two-year-old little white girl. Her name is Briar. Is that how you say her name? Briar? Um, oh, who? Yeah. Go ahead. What were we going to say? No, I guess so. Briar. Yeah, Briar, um, who she babysits for three days a week. Um, and the situation is this white security guard comes up to her because a white lady in the store um, feels like something isn't right. So she reports it to the security guard. Um, he comes up and starts to interrogate Emira and she's embarrassed, she's horrified about what's happened. And then this white guy who later we found out his name is Kelly, he starts to record the whole thing. He films the whole incident. And afterwards, after Emira calls Briar's dad, um, to come down to convince this guard that she's not kidnapping this little white girl. He wants Amira to share the video, to, to put it on social media so that it goes public so that everybody can see what happened and how she was treated. But Amira has no interest in doing that. She doesn't want the video to get out. She doesn't, she just wants to forget about it. She doesn't want, um, you know, she doesn't want the video to come out. So he deletes the video, supposedly, sends it to her email, um, and sh she thinks that's the end of it. Like, okay, you deleted it. Um, you don't have it. I'm not going to post it. And they go their separate ways. So um, in the next chapter, we meet Alex Chamberlain, Briar's mom who called Emira on that night to take Briar out because they had an incident at their house. So Amira comes from a party. One of the reasons the white lady says she stopped her because she wasn't dressed like a babysitter because she had just came from a birthday party, um, which Amira tells to Mrs. Chamberlain on the phone. And Mrs. Chamberlain says, it's fine. We just need you to come get Briar um, before the police get here. So we meet Alex Chamberlain, Briar's mom. Um, she is, I guess, a social media, I'm not sure what to call her job, a social media person? She's a writer. Oh, okay. Okay, she's a writer, I guess. She's a writer and she does like these, I don't know, talk shows about how to, I don't know, how to stand up for yourself and that type of thing for women. Okay, because she has an organization called Let Her Speak because right. I guess in college she wrote all these letters to companies and she was getting all these free merchandise and whatnot. So, but before that she had money, her parents were wealthy. So she's wealthy. Right. Um, and then she marries um, a newscaster, a famous, I don't know if he's famous, but a well-known newscaster. Um, so this is the life they live. They have two-year-old Briar. And at the beginning of the book, I think she's pregnant. She's pregnant with a baby. Is that right? Or do yes, we not find she out? Right. She's pregnant with a baby. So that's the premise of the story. So let's pick up from there. Um, am, am, I, am I leaving out anything? No, that's good without giving away the whole story. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I okay. guess Emira is uh, your average 25 year old. She's not sure what she wants to do yet with her life. She's graduated college. She has a couple of jobs that she does, but nothing that she wants to spend the rest of her life doing until she finds this job babysitting for Mrs. Chamberlain. Although the job isn't really a, somewhere it's gonna take you, that's what friends think that it's a dead end job, it's you know, like babysitting basically. But she mm -hmm. seems to really enjoy it and she really seems to care for the little girl. Mm -hmm. So that's how the story kind of goes. She kind of 
does everything that a 25 year old do. You know, she goes out with her friends on the weekend, she parties, but she doesn't get in any trouble or anything, but she likes to go out and party with her friends and then she babysits they for like this drink. lady later mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but in the meantime, she meets this guy, Kelly, again, mm-hmm. on the train one night as she was going out with her friends. And first she didn't, I guess, recognize him or didn't want to talk to him, but they started up a conversation and they started talking about that tape again. And that's when he said, if she didn't want to show it, that he would go ahead and delete it. And then, but he would send it to her in case she's changed her mind later. So she the one who posed had deleted it. She did something to his phone to make sure it was deleted. And he sent it to her email. And you never hear anything else about the tape until later on in the story. Mm-hmm. So in the meantime, Amira just, you know, going by the life as always, trying to figure out what to do, you know, going out with friends still. And she still went to babysit for Mrs. Chamberlain a few days a week. But after this incident happened at the grocery store, Mrs. Chamberlain seems to, I don't know, change. Her feelings towards Amira gets a little weird. Mm-hmm. She starts getting a little, I don't know, weirdly attached to her, like wanting to know her every move, like what is she doing today? What is she, you know, what is she eating? What is she wearing? Who is she talking to? Who is she dating? That type of thing. She's trying to strike up conversations with her to find out information, you know, like trying to be her friend all of a sudden. She's reading her text (laughs) messages. um, Right. She's reading, going to her phone, reading text messages, trying to see, you know, what she's up to and that type of thing. So it gets kind of weird and strange at that point. But in the meantime, Kelly, the guy who she met on the train who taped this incident, they wind up starting to date. Mm -hmm. So he's a white guy. She's a black guy. And at first she was kind of like, didn't know if she wanted to really date him, but they kind of, you know, seemed like they was getting along. Seemed Mm -hmm. like he liked her. She liked him. They had fun together. But then something strange happens when she finds, well, she she invited to Mrs. Chamberlain's Thanksgiving Thanksgiving. dinner. Because Mrs. Chamberlain still was feeling, I don't know, either guilty or just still having these weird feelings for Amira. She wanted to invite her over for Thanksgiving dinner. Didn't something (laughs) happen though that she knew when she was reading her text messages, you said something weird, she was already reading it. So she knew her flight was canceled before she did, before Amira did, because she had looked at her phone and she knew that she wasn't gonna be able to go home because her flight was canceled. So she yeah. invited Amira to Thanksgiving dinner because she's she was just eavesdropping on her phone and knew that she wasn't going to be able to go home. And she was happy about it. Like she said that she was kind of happy about it. And, um, you know, that Amira, be, uh, Amira would be there with, their, with her, with their family at Thanksgiving. So she was super excited in a weird way. Yeah, but she kind of pressured her into coming because Amira at first said no because she just talked to her boyfriend and he was going to be home too because he couldn't get a flight out either to see his family. So they were just going to spend the holidays together. And then she suggested that she bring him along. So then she does. Mm -hmm. This is where it really gets weird (laughs) because back when Alex was a teenager, she was dating this young man. And she assumed this man, young man had done something wrong to her, that he had wronged her in the worst way, ruined her whole high school career by something that happened to them in high school. Mm-hmm. So she's carried this along with her like forever. Mm-hmm. So when Amira comes to dinner with this boyfriend, lo and behold, this is the same boyfriend that she had back in high school. And Kelly, the guy so that the guy that recorded so the video. So it kind of throws up for a crazy loop Cause she's already been told a story to her friends about how he did her wrong and blah, 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 blah. And she's carried this around with her for the last 15 years. And Kelly has told Amira a little bit about the girl he dated in high school. He didn't go into all the details like she did with her friends, but right. she knows a little bit about this chick that he dated in high school. Her name, was Alex, her name was Alex Murphy. So she obviously doesn't connect the two and no one does. Um, until, like you said, they show up at her doorstep on Thanksgiving. All right. Now, this meeting doesn't affect Alex, I mean, Kelly at all. He just like, hey, what's up? That's you, Alex? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but Alex goes into a tailspin and mm-hmm. can't breathe almost because she's now looking at this guy who she, you know, hasn't seen in the last 15 years. And she keeps thinking in her mind he did something wrong to her. 
Mm-hmm. So this, I don't know. The evening kind of went kind of strangely because he didn't want to stay there after that, I guess, because maybe he right. felt a little uncomfortable I'm sure about he being did. at his ex-girlfriend's house with his present girlfriend. And knowing and she that was just that's acting her weird. Boss. And knowing that that's her boss, like he's like his like, right. No boss. And she like, was acting weird. She was asked, you know, when she did finally talk, she was asking, you know, strange questions, and it was just a weird evening after that. They were, they were, they were being passive aggressive with each other. Like, and Amira even accused him later on of being rude. Um, yeah, and he wasn't rude. He just, you know, I guess, really didn't want to be bothered. He was being passive aggressive, really. So, um. And Amira even says, you know, you were being rude to Miss Chamber, but you know, they had said beforehand, let's come up with a code word. And he was like, oh, I just want to yeah. leave. And Amira right. was like, oh, we're going we gonna to stick it out because it'll be even, even um, more weird if we just leave. Like, we'll have to explain why we're leaving. And I don't think Alex wanted that. No, she didn't want them to leave because she wanted to still, I guess, figure out what's going on. No. Did he really, you know, care for her or you know what I mean it seemed like she was very interested in figuring out their relationship so Alex and Kelly have this we're like I don't know so Amira is basically in the middle of it now uh, I think I feel like we skipped a whole bunch of stuff but that's okay um <laughs> about the video like yeah well, we Amira at that point didn't hadn't known anything other than that they had broken up right so Amira kind of like Kelly connects the two of them, or they're connected by Kelly. Right. And Mira only knows what Kelly has told her, obviously, because in Miss in um she so she doesn't know Alex's side of the story. She only knows and she never finds out Alex's side of the story. Alex at the end, I guess, but she never sits down or wants to talk to her because I don't know if she doesn't think that that's her business or she doesn't care because she's with Kelly. She doesn't really care about what Miss Chamberlain says, but she doesn't care to know Alex's side and she doesn't really get all the details from Kelly beforehand because she doesn't care to know. Even afterwards, Kelly kind of tells her, but he doesn't give her details. He, they, they're basically accusing each other of doing things. Like Alex is accusing Kelly of having a fetish toward um, black people. And Kelly is accusing Alex um, of being, uh, I guess, I don't know what the right word is. Like a like, guilty white woman, if you ask Prejudice. Like, because, she, <laughs> like she really because prejudiced, but she's trying right. not to be, or she's trying to make up for being that way. Right, because she called the police. The incident was that um, Kelly and Alex were dating in high school. Alex was Alex used to write Kelly all these notes and put them in his locker or so she thought. So one note Alex writes gives Kelly all her information like where I live, my address, which I guess he already knew, but the passcode to get into her house and something like that. Um, and she thinks that Alex, I mean, Kelly showed the note to one of the uh, boys in school, a boy named Robbie Comer or something. I guess yeah. he was a star athlete, which... This part didn't come out till later. When they said that he was like a star athlete and he had a scholarship, this is a black kid, a little black boy, mind you. So I'm thinking he had a football scholarship. They didn't exactly say what the scholarship was in. Just no, that they didn't. Like, you just assumed. And then later of- on, then later on, they talk about he <laughs> lost his volleyball. I'm like, are you serious? Volleyball. Well, I guess to him it's important. He likes volleyball. <laughs> but really, a black it's kid a on a volleyball scholarship, to to like, if he, you know, real, like realistically, football. He she could have just said, but a little black boy on a volleyball scholarship. Come on now, please. It happens. No, that was dumb. I was like, well, anyway. maybe not. It, but you know, football, basketball. That's kind of you know, right. I guess maybe especially for a little black kid. I can see if it was something out of the ordinary. And and then and then they said that and Robbie then, wasn't that. And then you know, remember up. where they lived? That they lived in Allentown. Allentown was kind of a no. It don't even matter. They said yeah. that they said that Robbie wasn't even that tall. Robbie was only five foot something. So realistically, it would have been more that Kelly was on the volleyball scholarship because he was tall and lanky and a white guy. But a short black dude on a volleyball scholarship, I didn't buy that at all. That was I didn't I didn't care for that part of the story. But anyway, <laughs> that's just my opinion. Uh, anyway, so I guess he, I, I, and I might have missed this part, who comes up to her and asks her if they can have a party? Was That wasn't Kelly. That was the guy, right? Robbie was like, That oh, was the guy asking. Huh. 
And she said, Kelly no. only asked after they came by the house, can they just stay? Right. So right. she said, no. When the dude came up and asked her, oh, your parents are going to be out of town. Can we come over and have a party? And she told him no. Right to his face, she said no. So her and Kelly. Oh, are a swag bag. Bag. Yeah, I'm just going to do a swag bag. Okay. Her and Kelly are spending the night together. And um, all of a sudden, they hear these, you know, they hear these people coming in okay. and they see, oh, we have this book. They see that it's the kids from school. And Alex is like, what's going on? Like, how did they get, how did they get the passcode? Like, how do they know how to get into my house? So and Kelly, and Kelly was like, oh, don't worry about it. Let, just let them have fun or whatever. And Alex is like, no. The housekeeper and the little sister come up and Alex is like, call the police. And Kelly's like, no, no, don't call the police blah, blah, blah. So anyway, the police come, mm -hmm. the black boy gets arrested. He, they found out he has drugs in his pocket. He loses his scholarship and everybody blames Alex. So she's now a pariah in high school and Kelly breaks up with her um, with this famous line. Uh, hey, I don't know, something about may they pass, may they part cross ways again. and they pass, never, never cross again, cross or, something again like or something around that. Right. So <laughs> I guess, but so yeah, yeah so but Alex is a pariah. So, so again, they both have different opinions of what happened that night. And it seems like for Alex, it has affected the rest of her life. So what do yeah, you think? But see, you know, with this story, okay. Cause at the end, mm -hmm. Alex is whole, I mean, what well, then she didn't know but she did find out a few days after that that it was not Kelly. Yeah, you know? we found out at the end. See, yeah. That's right. what bothered me. She's been mm -hmm. holding in, you know, Karen is all around with her for what? Yeah. It wasn't her, his fault. He didn't ruin her yeah. life. What happened ruined her life, maybe, according to her, but he isn't the one who did it, but she's you yes. know, held him responsible for it for all these years. Yeah. She right. even told a story to her friends. She didn't tell them the absolute truth. She told them her right. fantasy she wanted to believe because she said it was better believing that he was at fault than that what happened and just, you know. That he was telling the truth. You right. At the he end, they do reveal. The truth. He had not called. Right. He hadn't given them that information. Matter of right. fact, she put the letters in the wrong. They fell in um, between or something. The wrong mm -hmm. locker. Mm -hmm. Robbie's locker was up under his. It, right, so they that's was how Rodney in. found out. She stuck mm -hmm. it in the wrong place. Or no, she stuck it in his, but he it fell down like he was getting trapped. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So he Robbie. never got it, and Robbie must have gotten it because he wanted. Yeah, he there. did. Right, Robbie got <laughs> it, but right. Robbie never told Kelly that he got it. So, like I said, he she's blaming Kelly. Kelly's blaming her. Robbie is supposed to be the victim, supposedly, in this, which I do not buy at all because... Well, no, he's not the victim because I was he, like, had enough, he gets arrested at the house and they blame he Alex. has drugs on him. If he right. didn't have those drugs, they would have just, you know, let him go. Well, who let knows? Him go. But they making it seem like he was the victim. Robbie lost his stupid volleyball scholarship. Yeah, Robbie, everybody blamed Robbie her did, for calling the but police I'm like, in the first place. That's what I told him. I'm like, why didn't she speak up? Because Alex told them not to come to her house. And then if Robbie knew that the letter was for Kelly in the first place, why didn't she never confront Robbie and say, Robbie, um, why didn't you give the letter to Kelly? Like, you know, I'm his girlfriend and this letter is meant for him. Did you even tell him that you got this letter in the I first no place? Idea. They never even mentioned it. That's what know. I'm saying. That's what so I'm saying. So that's that, what I'm saying. Know. Alex did not speak up for herself because that no, would have been shut down right there. Right there, it's like, it's not my fault if you had cocaine in your pocket, first of all. I told you not to come to my house. First of all, you know, I told you not to come to my house. Ain't nobody tell you to bring drugs or have drugs in your pocket. And if you knew the letter was not addressed to you, if it was for Kelly, you know I'm his girlfriend, did you even tell him or why didn't you give him the letter in the first place after you saw that it was in the wrong locker? Did you even tell Kelly about the letter? So, and how come Kelly didn't confront Robbie and say the same thing? Hey, my girlfriend said that she um, wrote me a letter or whatever, and that, you know, is this true? Do you have this letter? Like, why wasn't just the basic fundamental things, all this miscommunication, why wasn't that even just said? Why does this even happen when she could have just spoke know. up? 
and ask the know. questions. Be like, she, how you get my She's scared to speak up for herself. Assume. She just assumed Kelly d- did it. And when right. he said he didn't do it, he never got the letter. She should have asked Robbie, Robbie, did you show this letter to Kelly? Did you tell Kelly, um, you know, like she never even asked Robbie, Robbie, you know, but she told him no. So right. I feel like none of this is Kelly's fault. Um, and it might not even be Alex's fault because it's Robbie's fault. Didn't nobody it tell Robbie happened. to come over it, to her house? Something that happened that, you know. Robbie put his own self things. in that situation. No, it's a Robbie put, and that's what actually what I said. Robbie put his own self in that situation. Because well, I, I didn't tell like, her to she, I don't think that bothered her more. I think the worst thing that bothered her was that Kelly broke up with her. It seemed like that affected her oh, yeah. more than yeah, other yeah. people not talking to her. Because mm-hmm. she assumed everything would be fine. And then when he mm-hmm. broke it off, it seemed, I think that would really right, yeah, that, kept that her from the, you know, broke her. her whole yeah. 15 years of not, you know, yeah, not the incident, but because he broke mm-hmm. it off, right? And then it, he wasn't by her. As mm-hmm. she go through the story, it kind of seems like she's kind of I don't know obsessed with him almost because even mm-hmm. if she finds out him and Amira are dating, she leaves out the house, leaves the baby to go follow him. Yes, to ask him questions <laughs> about their relationship. <laughs> it's like, what kind she of nut walked, does that? Right, walked out and left her baby, and <laughs> like you said, confronts she goes him to his job. And she mm-hmm. didn't know where she he lived. He looked in mm-hmm. Amira's email mm-hmm. and she'd been snooping around and found out where he worked. Mm-hmm. And then she goes down there and confronts him thinking that he's, I don't know, she was thinking, I don't know, he's going to, I guess, miss her or think she's still beautiful and whatever, that he made this Crazy. mistake years ago. But that mm-hmm. didn't happen. He was telling her how much he was in you know, love or really liked Amira and, mm-hmm. and all that about their relationship and how he felt about her and he wanted to have a relationship with her. He didn't mention their relationship back in the day at all. Right, because he, he was like, what are you doing here? Like, why are you even here? It's like, does Amira, like, why are you here? Kelly just wanted to be like rid of her. Like you said, like he, what happened happened. He broke up with her. He moved on with his life, but mm-hmm. she still blamed him. She was him. like, no. Like, she no she blamed him even though she knew she knew that he was not responsible but she convinced herself all these years like she said it's better to instead of just coming clean and say instead of confronting him and re- rehashing all this she should just say it you know you were right you weren't to blame I you know she should have just said that after she found it maybe they could have got back together maybe they could have worked it out instead of being dang, uh, damaged all these years over it, over something you know, she knows he did true, yeah. She knows that she chose to continue to feel that way and make herself miserable. And I don't know what was going on with her. I don't even know how to describe what she was doing. I really don't. I don't know. That's crazy. She, yeah, she was just <laughs> crazy. I don't even know how to describe it or what was wrong with her psyche or... Yeah. But anyway, what? after that, she's trying to convince Amira that Kelly is only interested in her because she's she's black, because mm-hmm. he likes to date, you know, exotic women, either black women or Puerto Rican women or anybody that's other than white is what he usually dates. Mm-hmm. So she was trying to convince her that, you know, he really didn't care for her the way she thought he did, that that was the only reason he was with her. So when she wouldn't listen to what she was trying to say, she decides she's going to do it a different way. She goes into Amira's email and she finds that video. Mm. And she decides to call the lady who works with her husband at the news station Lainey. to help her broadcast like, right. this video so people can mm. actually see it. When she knew Amira did not want that video out there. Mm-hmm. So she broadcasts this video and she keeps saying she's doing this for Amira, but I still don't think she was doing it for Amira. So why do you think that she said, why? Alex said that she was thinking she was helping the mirror, but helping the mirror to do what? That's what I'm saying. I don't know how she felt that was going to help her because she already said she didn't want it seen. She hadn't told her parents about what had happened. She didn't want anybody to know. I think, I mean, in my opinion, from the reading the book, it was seemed like it was mostly for her. You know, she would get her, uh, Kelly and the mirror broke up. She knew that because she, she would think Kelly did it because he's the one who had the video. So you, think that, so you think that was her goal to... I think that was her goal, to break to them get, up. I don't think it was get, to help Amira, because how would this help her? To get Amira to see that Kelly um, 
betray her like she betrayed out like he betrayed out but he didn't betray her that's what i'm saying so that's why i'm saying i think she right. did it just to break them up she did because that's the messed up part because <laughs> she knew he didn't betray her right. she's the only one i mean kelly uh, sticking to his story of course because he knows it as well but she for a fact found out that what you know that that wasn't true so you're right she could have only done it for herself because she knows kelly didn't do anything wrong all those years right. ago so that wouldn't but help she wants Amira. Amira to think that she wants Amira to think that Kelly still wronged her or that he's this person. Right. Like I see I was right about him. That's what she right. wanted to say. Right. Yeah. And actuality, that was not the case. So and, what happened? And then to actually, I mean, it kind of helped Alex. That was her attention, her and the lady, because she was going to plug her book. Remember, she was trying to write a book that she couldn't yeah. write anymore because she was so enthralled with trying to figure out what Amira was doing. She couldn't sit down and write anymore. And so then, this lady said, well, if we do this, Amira, if we do this, was, this interview, oh, we're going to plug your book at the same time. Right. And she was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so idea. what? So um, uh, Amira finds out on the day of the interview that Alex yes. was actually the one to post the video. And like we said before, she leaves in the same way, or she says kind of like the same thing, the same line that Kelly did sort of when he broke up with her. Right. And so she would know. How does she react? Like Alex, yeah. how does Alex <laughs> react? Like, All right. And she did it because she knew if she said that, she would know that she was the one who released she, that video. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she found out. And did Alex even apologize? But like you said, she... Alex oh, she was a, angry. Oh, but is that how do you think Alex angry. feels as a white woman? Like you said, Alex done Alex did something wrong twice. Like Alex didn't learn from her mistake. So instead of being honest, instead of coming clean with Kelly, she is continuing 14 years later to blame him for something she knows he did not do. And the same thing with Emira. She's behaving the same way she did then with Emira releasing this video saying oh it's for it's for the good of hers like you can't tell somebody else what's good for you or what's going to benefit you no you did this for you and she still right. hasn't learned so who do you think was right about who do you think alex was right about kelly or that kelly was right about alex or they both were right about each other hmm. well, i think that was sort of kind of right about each other but i don't know if kelly just I don't know if he just was hanging around black people just to hang around them or if he, you know. Because it like in the epilogue. Because like you said, even with Robbie, him and Robbie had been friends for all those years. Mm -hmm. But then it said that college. Uh, he just liked to date a lot of you know black women. That maybe so that was his I preference. Think, uh wait, wasn't Alex looking at his social media and looking at all talking about he called her queen or my queen or this white dude is uh <laughs> on social media with all these brown skinned girls and well, I don't know. Maybe she was just jealous that he didn't want her. Maybe because he went to the prom. She said with Robbie's cousin or sister. Robbie's cousin, or yeah. So um, I think absolutely. she was just jealous. I mean, she wasn't black, so she knows she didn't have a chance. So because <laughs> that's not what he wanted. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm thinking. That she just was, and it seemed like the whole thing, everything she did, was out of jealousy. It wasn't out of concern for Emira. Couldn't have been. Because no, none of this benefited the girl at all. So do you think Alex was trying to be black, as they say, I'm, I'm using quotes, um, by trying to, because uh, she was looking up songs, like I said, she was looking up songs that Amira had. She was looking up Amira's song. I think she was trying uh -huh. to figure out about Amira, like, okay, so why did, uh, maybe she was trying to find out why black. Kelly likes black women, maybe. She was looking at all the music she listened to, the way she dressed, you know, things she said, where her friends go, that type of thing. It was almost like, like I said, it seemed like to me she was like jealous. But she had a black friend. She had the other black lady as her friend. Yeah, but so she, she was kind of weird too, because she was asking a mirror about her hair, like, are you? Because she had weaving her hair. Yeah, like, that are lady. You I would have. your head natural. And she was like, like Zara. Oh. <laughs> Zara called her the Uncle Tom lady. Yeah. So. <laughs> but yeah, no, that lady was. She was weird. But she was. She was. She weird. was uppity white a uh, uppity black lady because she was right a, she wasn't you know, like amira amira was right kind of cool was, and hip, oh, you, you know, went to temple girl. right you know <laughs> like you went to temple and you did this you educated and why and i was like excuse you like <laughs> oh 
like, yeah, like you're supposed to use your blackness because you went to, you know, you graduated from an Ivy League college. That shouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. She is who she is. So do you think Kelly, like, um, so do you think just because he dated black women or he was enthralled by black culture or had black friends that he did have a fetish for black people? She used the word fetish. Do you he think that, fetish, that constitutes though. a fetish? Because I don't, I don't, I don't think that constitutes a fetish. I, just I don't think, think so. some people just gravitate towards people sometimes. Mm -hmm. Maybe their culture, maybe, you know. Mm -hmm. Or like you say, do and say how they look, how they dress. And oh, that looks, you know, like you want to be with the cool kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. And That's it actually. seemed like Amira was really laid back, like she was easygoing. She um, was. She wasn't pretentious. No. Um, you know, she was honest. She didn't make any pretext about not know about being who she wasn't. Like if she didn't know something, she was like, oh, I don't know that. Or, you know, she never put on false airs um, about anything. You know, she was just who she was. She wasn't trying to impress anybody by saying she had more than she did or less than she did, you know? So you I know. think, maybe, yeah. you know, that was what drew both Kelly and Alex to Amira. Because Alex was or impressed. maybe Alex, like Alex, you know, looked at a mirror and thought, "This is everything that I, you know, maybe she wanted to be." She never spoke up for herself. She never was confident about herself, and you know what I mean. So I think maybe in some way, she kind of envied a mirror and a mirror's life. I think I think she did too because a mirror had friends. And remember, Alex was isolated. Alex didn't have any friends, but Amira had this group of girlfriends that kind of stood up for her, looked out for her. Um, Zara was her best friend. And yeah, the other Alex girl. had friends, but they were, you know, I'm talking about in high school. She went to, you know. Right. Well, she had Jody and Rachel. Or whatever. Yeah. Tamara. Right. <laughs> so, Not the kind of friends like her and Amira. She wanted to be with her. Right. Amira. She had mom friends. Like when she was Amira's age, you know, she, that. Right. She had mom friends. And then they both, like, she said that her husband, Peter, was older than her and Kelly was older than Amira. So, like, she wanted to find any kind of similarities. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Do you think the whole, I thought the whole thing was weird. Like, I thought it was weird. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I felt at times uncomfortable reading this book. Like I, like I told you the scene with when they first go back to Kelly's place, I was like, eh. I, don't know. I don't even know why we had to have that, but <laughs> oh, yeah, man, <laughs> they could have uh, just said, all right, we just, they just went back to, but they had to describe their, uh, yeah. I was like, really, was Amira? And I was like, really, Amira? Like, really? Yeah. You can find but it. I don't know. They both was kind of freaky, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Like, I, I get that, you know, the the book is about class, it's about race, awkwardness, and finding your place, and coming up, you know, I get that. Um, and also, I think it's about finding yourself. And Amira eventually, I guess, found herself, what mm -hmm. she wanted to do with her life, because before well, she, she was kind of confused, she didn't, and she didn't she, know what to do for a career. But she knows she like we didn't talk about Briar, but she knows that she loved. She Briar. liked the little girl. She really did care for right. that little girl. And mm -hmm. I think if it hadn't have been for what happened, she probably would have still worked there. Right. Oh, yeah. Even though Kelly sure. was trying to convince her you should quit. Well, for his reasons. Well, if it um. hadn't have been for <laughs> Alex releasing that video, she probably. That's what I'm saying. Stayed. If that hadn't happened, I think she would just stay because she so seemed to really enjoy working, not just working as a babysitter, but just being with the little girl. And then they, she got offered a full-time position too. So right. if Alex, so I don't know what Alex was thinking. Like, I honestly think that she needed some counseling because she never got over or she never dealt with, or she never worked out. Her what family. happened to her back in high school. He just yeah. chose to hold this grudge and continue to blame Kelly instead of fessing up to it or accepting that it was all just a big misunderstanding. Kelly and wasn't- let it go then down, you know, instead of going back all these years and accusing him and attacking him, she should have just sat down and say, you know, or even afterwards, like I said, they could have got back together. Well, probably not because like you said, Kelly was into black girls and, but they could have, you know, they could have went. She could have at least said, you know, I'm sorry. Right. Or I found the letters that I had sent you when I was cleaning out the lockers. And I know that you didn't get them, so you couldn't have sent them, gave them Robbie. And I right. apologize. I would have, I would have confronted Robbie. I would have had a baseball bat or something to be like <laughs> Robbie. Why didn't you give Kelly the letter when you found it in your locker and you know it wasn't for you? Like, serious. Like, 
So that's right. She just let that go. She just took it <laughs> home and didn't think about it not one more bit after that. I would have like, like, I would have went to Robbie's house and did you know knocked on his door with a baseball bat and be like, okay. You know, you want to play this game? Like, I, for I, you came to my house opening up my door with my coat, then here go my coat with the baseball bat. Like, something. So I'm like, I don't understand why she didn't speak up for herself. I don't know. I don't know why she kept that, that secret. I just It doesn't even explain why she did it. It's like, why didn't you speak? If you knew, these, why didn't you just speak up for yourself? Why didn't you just say, you know, why did you choose to spend all these years with that in your heart that don't weigh it on you and continue to blame him and you know that he's not to blame why would you even do that like why so i don't know i just i don't know what was going on with alex i don't even know how you even come up with a character like alex <laughs> or like what kind of mental disorder that alex has what is this delusional called? basically she was living in some type of fantasy world she had cooked up in her head and she just kept it buried in there and it all came out when kelly came back into her life oh, I, oh god i don't know that was crazy no. so yeah so when she finds out amira finds out kelly did this she quits um after i don't know like i don't know like I, and I get wanting to have another job, but they was in the bathroom negotiating with the Green Party before. Well, they before went she there. quit, she because she said, "If I quit, I don't have a I job. Mean, I don't have a job now." So that's mm -hmm. why the girls say, "Okay, well, let's, you know, mm -hmm. we get your job then, and then you can quit." Because she didn't want to work there anymore after what she found out what Alex right. had done. Mm -hmm. But she didn't want to be jobless either, right? Because she, you know, she was twenty six now. She didn't have any insurance because her, you know, she was too old to be on parents' insurance, and mm -hmm. she wouldn't have any money. So, find out getting a job at the place she was already working at anyway. And it seems right. like, I mean, a, a more out, stuff. seemed like a good job for her. It but the video, the video kind of had both effects. Like, when they released the video, she said she got good comments and bad comments. But if the video hadn't been released, like you said, she would have still been working for the Chamberlains and she wouldn't have found another career path. That video... Um, even though she didn't want it to come out, um, kind of propelled her into the spotlight where people are calling her and say, okay, now you're Mark, even though that probably, you know, wasn't how she wanted to get it. But because right. of the video coming out, people were calling her. So even though she didn't want it to come out, it kind of benefited her in a way. It did kind of benefit in a, in a way. You know, and, and like I said, it's not, it wasn't, I'm not saying it's all benefit in a good way because she did get some negative feedback. Right, but, but she got some job something offers. From right, something positive came because she'd been wanting it. to change her life. She'd been wanting to find another career. She'd been wanting these things. And that video kind of brought people to her instead of the other way around. Like, oh, you're her, you know, can you, and she turned him down. She was like, oh, I don't want to come speak. But I mean, more opportunities yeah. opened up for her because of that video being put out there. So Alex, you know, it might have backfired on her, which it did totally, because it made her quit um, and moved on. And then Kelly, she knows she found out Kelly didn't do it. And she didn't even, Amir is the same way Alex. Amir didn't even call Kelly. He didn't Kelly apologize either and tell her that. No, Kelly knew called that. about congratulations. Yeah. And so Amir and but Alex he found out when he because he saw the video that they remember they were recording the show, so he saw mm -hmm. that, right? So he did eventually find out that Alex, you know, that he was right, and yeah. But she was saying well, she didn't knew. want to because she didn't want him to know that he was right about Alex. That was her whole thing. <laughs> well, he knew he knew he didn't do it. So yeah, he knew he, he didn't do it, but she right, didn't like want he to, knew he didn't do it in yeah, high school. He didn't want to give him, I guess, the credit for okay, you were right. <laughs> You know. because right if he's right about this but still i mean she yeah. didn't have to give him the credit because kelly's not a dumb person if he knew he didn't release the video the only other person that could have been was alex so that was a no-brainer right there so she didn't have to give him any validation about him being right he figured that out on his own like oh i didn't do it and none of your friends would do it so the only other person that could have did it behind your back was alex because i asked you if i can release it and you told me no so why would i go behind your back and do it 
Why would I make a pretense? If I wanted to release it, I wouldn't have went through the whole thing of deleting it. I would have been like, well, the video's on my phone. If I want to release it, I can release it. He never said that though. He said, okay, mm -hmm. you don't want me to release it. I'm going to delete it. Why go through the whole pretext and still release it behind her back if he was going to do it? this time that didn't even make no sense he was in a happy relationship with her she was happy he was happy he talking about he loved her so why would he ruin that why would he mess that up by releasing the video for what reason i don't know well she was that, streaming that right. night she was you know drinking and her friends was mm -hmm. telling her he had to do it because he the only one had the video and she's like well that's true who else would get it but she didn't well, think that somebody else could have got a hold of it you know mm -hmm. out of her email well, Zara figured it out because she was the main one. But then Zara was like, think about it. Did you have She the this? main one who brought it up, said it had to be. Yeah. Counted. But then she, <laughs> and she's like, oops, I made a mistake. <laughs> <What's> right. <that? laughs> At least she admitted that she made a mistake. <laughs> like, oops. And then, you know, but she said, oops, my bad. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but again, like Amira couldn't even call Kelly or send him a text to say, sorry. You know, she didn't even have to say you were right about Alex. She could have just said sorry. No, she never talked to him again after that. I ever, know, but that's what even I'm though saying. he tried to call her, right? A couple so times that's a, yeah, her and Alex call, are similar so. on that part. Like I feel yeah. like I don't know. Like I didn't, I didn't love Amira's character. I felt that she was like, like yeah, like saying like 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 this all the time. Like yeah, like she was being timid and I don't know. I didn't feel like she was she spoke up for herself but the way she did it like she was totally different with alex and then with her friends like she was more boisterous um and she wasn't saying like all the time and um but when she was around alex she was like um yeah like uh you know she was doing all that and i was like mm, okay <laughs> so i don't know but so overall do you have anything else you wanted to say about the book sorry like I said, overall, I think it was a it was a good read. It was easy to read. Um, it's an enjoyable book to read because when you get to you know when you get to that twist on the boyfriend, it kind of takes a whole another minute. So <laughs> I think it's it was you know it kept the pages turning because every time you got to one page, you just want to find out what happened. You know, you just want to keep trying to find out what yeah, is happening yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, it was a very it was a very easy read. Like the you know the dialogue was straightforward. The right. you know. The conversation was straightforward. Everything was clear. Like, you know, the story was like you said, you, oh, what, you know, what's happened? What's Alex going to do next? Like, what is going on with Alex? Like, why is she obsessed with the mirror? Like, you wanted to continue to read and find out, um, you know, like you said, like, what's going to happen next? Or what's, what's Alex going to do next? Or what's going on with Alex? Or right. even, you know, Briar or, yeah. So, yeah, so but, definitely a thumbs up. And I think yeah. it's one of those books that, you know, maybe you can find something in there in common. You know, mm -hmm. this thing of finding out, you know, yeah, who especially you are and what you want to be and what do you want to do with your life. Parenthood, it goes into all I think that's kind of the message I got out of it. That yeah. all these things happening, all the decisions that you make throughout life mm -hmm. affect the way your life turns out later. Yeah, and it has a it has a multitude of themes like we talked about race, class. It talks about parenthood. It talks about um, economic status. You know, it has a multitude of themes. Like I said, that I think people of different backgrounds, ages, ethnicities that they can relate to. They can find something to relate to. You know, it talks about forgiveness, identity, like you said. So I think there's a whole bunch of different themes in here that people can find. Anybody that reads it will find right. something they can relate I to. I agree. I agree. So <laughs> I also give it a thumbs up because it was such a fun age. Like, I don't know if that's supposed to be like a pun or like a title, but it's like, like a ironic title maybe, um, maybe. because, uh, <laughs> or is she talking about Briar's age? Is she talking about Amira's age? Like, well, I thought she was talking okay. about Amira's age. I could be wrong, yeah. but I thought maybe because you're kind of in the middle of, you know, you're mm -hmm. adult, but you haven't quite figured out how to be an adult. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like you still living that life you did basically. Cause listen to her and her friends talk and they kind of still sound like teenagers the way they talked and behaved. And, oh my God. You know, they was always going out and you know, even though they all, had, well, her friends, they were professional women. They all had jobs. Right. But Amira just hadn't figured out, you know, exactly what she wanted to do. Yet. She but had it the seems job, like they she were didn't have a career. Not she wasn't towards that adulthood mm -hmm. thing yet. 
but <laughs> like most 20 year olds are I guess 25 year olds yeah she was <laughs> you know you kind of like still you want to party and go out with your friends and uh, have fun still mm-hmm. and then you act that other stuff is later you know I get married have kids and settle down I'm 30 mm-hmm. <laughs> so she wasn't there but I give the novel a thumbs up too I definitely think it's worth the read um it actually it was a it was a fun read like it was because it touched on a lot of different things, but it wasn't too heavy in one area, you know. It wasn't, it, you know, it was a you know, lot of funny moments here and there. So exactly, it like unexpected moments. And <laughs> like you said, the book had me talking out loud, like, what is going on with this lady? Like, you know, so uh, it, it kind of, I kind of felt like I was reading, but I was watching a movie too, because the characters- No, I was imagining yeah. in my head, like, what yeah. like, and exactly. what like, mm-hmm. and what Kelly yep. like, and- Mm-hmm. imagining their you know their house yeah. and <laughs> yeah me too it was playing out in my head like a movie as I was reading it was that clear of a book right. it was that like clear, I could see a mirror and her friends right. at the club and all yep <laughs> exactly it was that well written like you know so I yeah. felt the same way very descriptive I think yes yeah it was and it, it all came together like she didn't leave any loose ends um no. she you know she made sure she connected everything and went back and told you and it was all very well connected and it all fit together and it didn't leave you wandering, you know, like I said, the Robbie thing, like I said, I, you know, and it gave you a sense of, okay, what would I have done different if I was Alex or if I was Emira? Like I just said, like, if I was Alex, I would have went to Robbie house and, you know, but, and confronted but the him way about, she you told know. the story, but Can't the way she told your problems, it, you the one did to yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but everything that she does, but the way she told the story, everything fit together, you know, everything fit together about Alex's rest of her high school years. And, you know, it all, it all fit perfectly once she explained it all. And once she was like, oh, that's what happened. And like you said, two twists. I thought the book had two twists. The one, like you said, when they showed up at the door and then when she told that Alex knew the truth all along, that was another right. twist. That like, was like at the very like, end. What? I mean, the last yeah. couple of pages, I'm like, what? Like, wait, what? Exactly. Because like, what? What, what, what bothered me, okay, you told this story to your friends, like, oh, mm-hmm. let me tell you what he did to me, girl. You know, mm-hmm. that's what she was saying. And she was saying, you know, he had these people call my house and blah, 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 and find out she knew all along he didn't do that. So right. why would you even tell them this story? And, and then you they make was hating Kelly because right. they assumed he, you know, had did her wrong too. Right. And the, the whole time you're reading it, you trying to decide who's the bad guy, who's the good guy, or what's happening. So you, you know, you, Alex, yeah. are you rooting for Alex? I kind of thought Kelly was the bad guy. Right. You know, that's what I'm saying. Out. That's what I said. This whole time the, you're trying you know, to figure out. Happened. I right. thought it first, but, you know, as you got into the story, like, no. Right. Good guy. That's what, and that's what I said, the way she wrote it, like you said, you're trying to like, it's, it's like, like, who's the bad guy? Is there like, is Kelly the bad guy? Is right. Alan, like, who, you know, you're going back and forth. But then when you find out, like you said at the end, yeah, like, Chambers, who's the bad guy? <laughs> you know, they want you to make it seem like Kelly was the one not being genuine. Like he was, he was the one suspicious. And, but like I said, she put it all together so well. And that thing at the end, when it was like, I was like, oh, are you serious? Like what? Yeah. Like, it just makes you know, like this lady was already doing some suspect stuff with a mirror. And now you find this out about her. Right. So <laughs> it's like, mm. so yeah, so it was, it was good. It was good. Thumbs up. So yeah. for anybody that's interested in reading such a fun age, it is available here at the Broadview Public Library District with your library card. Um, it is available on media on demand as well as an audiobook and as an ebook if you are interested in that. And we would love to have you come check this book out and give us your opinion of such a fun age. Um, let us know if you agree with our opinions, if you agree with our synopsis, we would love to hear from you about this book. Next month's book banter is going to be on the 28th of January, and uh, it is to be announced. So if anyone has any opinions about what would make a good book banter, um, you can leave it in the comments below. You can post it to our Facebook page, and we will keep you posted on January 2021 book banter. All right. Thank you all for joining us again for our book banter of Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. And we hope you'll join us on next month in the new year. All right. Bye. Great new year. Bye. Everybody have a happy holiday. Happy new year. Stay safe. Yes. Cool beans.
ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಲೈಕ್ 